Sanya, thank you for the introduction and uh, thank you for chairing uh, this session. Okay. Uh, for my uh, 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 presentation, uh, 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 as a background reading, uh, 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 you see the book chapter uh, on the slide. Uh, uh, the, uh, the, the audience uh, is referred to uh, this publication. Uh, this is background reading. And uh, uh, my, uh, the part of uh, my, uh, today is my uh, presentation. It is uh, now, uh, uh, this will be uh, um, published uh, very soon uh, um, uh, by uh, Rutledge, uh, uh, Francis, Taylor and Francis, uh, very soon. So early next year, I hope. So uh, the contents of the presentation are uh, introduction to German Korean German relations and uh, inter Korean conflicts in the 1960s uh, that's important and then uh, uh, the North Korean leader Kim Il Sung's interest in the South Korean intellectuals and overseas Koreans and uh, lastly Soviet support for Kim Il Sung in the 1960s so uh, this is, uh, even though I'm a linguist, uh, uh, I do uh, research on the Cold War history. Uh, so this is uh, uh, part of uh, the research. So uh, the, the, the basis for uh, today's presentation comes from the uh, German federal archives and also German political archives. Uh, they are, most of them are found in uh, Berlin. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, so when it comes to the division of both countries, uh, um, uh, of course, uh, uh, there were two uh, Cold War uh, uh, blocks and uh, uh, North Korea and the South Korea, they were um, um, uh, divided. And uh, uh, the scope of uh, this uh, presentation covers inter-Korean relations with respect to German archives during 1960s. So uh, the uh, South Korea <clears throat> and the West Germany reopened their diplomatic ties uh, in 1955. And whereas uh, <clears throat> the relations between North Korea and East Germany had already uh, been established uh, in 1949. And uh, uh, the relationship between North Korea and East Germany was a special one because of the, uh, the strong uh, socialist uh, uh, solidarity. And, uh, uh, and uh, uh, East Germany uh, 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 pl provided a lot of things uh, uh, for the reconstruction of North Korea. Uh, and uh, they built uh, even an uh, entire city. It's called the Hamung uh, city in North Korea after the war. Uh, yet uh, their relationship weakened in the early 1960s due to North Korea's Juche ideology uh, with the uh, personal cult of uh, Kim Il-sung and its privileging of its alliance with China over its relationship with the Soviet bloc. And uh, 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 and the, uh, on the southern part, uh, West German uh, de developmental aid to South Korea uh, was also uh, uh, very important, and uh, South Korea benefited a lot from West German uh, economic uh, aid. <clears throat> and uh, uh, as uh, Dr. Uh, Yu Jae Lee mentioned, uh, uh, there were a lot of uh, Korean guest workers in West Germany, uh, especially during the 1960s, and uh, even during in the in the 1970s as well. And uh, there were massive numbers of uh, Korean guest workers uh, 
who were uh, coal miners and uh, 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 hospital nurses. <clears throat> uh, so uh, the, the North Korean uh, regime's diplomatic strategies after the Korean War appear to have been influenced by the international political circumstances and the tide of the times, but there were seemingly independent incidents that occurred both inside and also outside of the Korean peninsula during the mid and late 1960s that have not been uh, connected adequately, that this study also seeks to explain within an interwoven context. <clears throat> So there was uh, some uh, in the in the diplomatic archives of the West of, of West Germany. I found uh, some documents uh, relating regarding the escalate escalating inter-Korean security situation. So uh, uh, this is the beginning. Uh, so North Korea uh, in in the year of a nine in 1967 abruptly started uh, uh, attacking South Korean and uh, U.S. forces near uh, demarcation line, uh, demilitarized zone. And uh, the, the violent activities of, activities of the North Korean agents and the counter espionage actions of the South Korean troops and the police became the daily news in 1967 and 68 and uh, there was an uh, 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 the i mean the north korean agents kept up an unrelenting uh, campaign of attacks on various parts of south korea and thus escalating the tension and uh, um, there were many casualties and so on uh, this period is also marked by the North Korean attacks on the U.S. Navy intelligence ship Pueblo and uh, uh, the uh, EC-129 uh, reconnaissance, uh, U.S. reconnaissance uh, uh, airplane uh, shut down incident <clears throat> in 1969, respectively. Uh, so according to the East European archives, however, uh, Kim Il-sung's aggressive strategy of using armed forces against the South Korea was uh, linked to the military conflicts between the United States and the North Vietnam in Indochina at the time. In other words, the aim of Kim's aggressive strategy was to take advantage of the Vietnam War situation in order to distract the U.S. attention and the U.S. and South Korean military resources from the Vietnam conflicts. South Korea started sending uh, uh, the troops to Vietnam in September 1964. So this was, uh, uh, we can see that the, the, no, the consequence of uh, sending troops to Vietnam uh, uh, is also visible uh, uh, in the Korean Peninsula. Uh, given the successive uh, dispatch of the South Korean uh, troops to Vietnam, uh, South Korean involvement in the Vietnam War most likely influenced the Kim Il-sung's strategy. So, uh, according to Salon Thai, uh, the Vietnam factor seems to have uh, facilitated the North Korean commando attacks. So this turbulent period was also marked by the enactment of the U.S. RK status of a forces agreement. It's called the SOPA in July 1966. So in this regard, Kim Il-sung's attack on South Korea's military targets might have been intended to test the military alliance between the U.S. and South Korea. So, uh, and uh, uh, we found uh, many interesting uh, uh, contents uh, in the archives. For example, Kim Il-sung's account on the North Korean approach to handling South Korean intellectuals in front of Eric Honecker in 1977. So, the 
General Secretary of the former East German uh, uh, Communist Party, his name is Eri Honecker. He visited uh, uh, North Korea a couple of times and uh, uh, we, we found the uh, entire uh, conversation uh, records between Kim Il-sung and the Honecker regarding uh, uh, Korean Peninsula uh, matters and also uh, uh, you know, the Soviet and the uh, US relations and so on. So here, um, Kim Il-sung uh, uh, states that uh, uh, he has been supporting uh, South Korean uh, intellectuals for, um, for, um, uh, uh, for preparing some kind of uh, uh, a civil, uh, civil revolution in South Korea. And uh, uh, there are uh, no names mentioned, but this is very interesting uh, document. And uh, 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 there was also a, a student, uh, April 19, uh, student revolution in 1960. And uh, Kim Il-sung says that uh, he was uh, he has been also supporting the some uh, uh, some uh, progressive party party that was that participated in the uh, uprising in the revolution and uh, here uh, as you see Kim Il-sung Il maintains that the North Korea supported this party some progressive party which organized the uprising in 1960 in South Korea. <clears throat> and uh, Kim Il-sung says that uh, he supported only South Korean intellectuals, but not uh, they, but uh, this party was a failure because uh, uh, they did not uh, uh, get uh, uh, support from the, uh, uh, you know, working class in South Korea. <clears throat> Um, uh, and uh, here uh, on the next slide, uh, we see uh, Kim Il-sung's account on the North Korean approach to handling uh, South Korean intellectuals. Uh, this is uh, uh, additional material. And, uh, uh, and uh, Kim Il-sung here maintains that uh, his illegal organization in South Korea did not work in the workers' movement and that this workers' movement was uh, very weak. And uh, this illegal organization uh, uh, worked almost exclusively with the intellectuals in South Korea, as I mentioned. <clears throat> and uh, he criticizes uh, uh, Park jong the former president who was, uh, uh, Kim Il-sung claims that uh, he was the um, uh, U.S. spy. And uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, this is uh, true that uh, Park jong was a Japanese officer and before the, uh, before the liberation. Uh, and the Kim Il Sung was uh, uh, in these documents. We also found that the Kim Il Sung was also interested in recruiting overseas Koreans as well because they were also very important to him. Uh, uh, for uh, in terms of uh, getting support for his unification policy, and uh, this was the also. This was the time when Japan was allowing uh, Chinese Koreans, Korean residents in Japan to move to North Korea if they wanted to do so. So uh, from December 1959, Japan and the General Association of Korean Residents in Japan, it's called the Chochongyan, started sending the Chinese Koreans to North Korea. And uh, many Korean residents in Japan and their family members moved to North Korea permanently from 1959 to 1984. Uh, then uh, 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 in 1967, uh, there was a huge um, diplomatic scandal in uh, West Germany. Uh, it's called the East Berlin espionage uh, incident. 
and uh, uh, there there was some uh, 17, 17 South Korean citizens were kidnapped by the Korean uh, Central Intelligence Agency at that time, and uh, this operation was uh, illegal in West Germany because uh, uh, the uh, because the uh, West German authority was not contacted and they were not informed of this uh, uh, covert operation. And uh, the, uh, they were, uh, the, these 70 people were kidnapped because uh, uh, they, uh, some of them were blamed for visiting uh, Pyongyang secretly. And then many of them were blamed for uh, uh, accused of uh, uh, having visited the uh, uh, East Berlin North Korean embassy. And uh, not surprisingly, uh, the Western go West German government was uh, extremely unhappy because uh, this, uh, was, uh, this uh, uh, action was undertaken by the South Korean government officials on German or West German soil. And uh, uh, the most depressing issue for the West German government in this instant was the violation of German sovereignty by a foreign state. And the, the German government wanted to have uh, the 17 people, all of them, as soon as possible, uh, back to uh, Germany. <clears throat> and uh, the Kim Il Sung was, uh, uh, I mean, the Kim Il Sung and, and the North Korea, they uh, 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 contacted via East Germany uh, South Koreans uh, in uh, West Germany. Uh, that was uh, also uh, uh, true uh, because uh, some people uh, confessed, admitted that uh, they were contacted and then they visited uh, North Korea and so on. So uh, uh, the uh, the ninety uh, two thousand six South Korean investigation of the East Berlin espionage incident also confirms that many overseas South Korean intellectuals visited Pyongyang in the early and the mid nineteen sixties, and with respect to South Korea, Kim Il Sung also emphasized North Korea's own efforts and. Uh, fraternal help of the socialist countries, which was especially important as a propaganda toward the South Korea. Thus, we can infer from the German archival sources that uh, Kim had a, a keen interest in communicating with and supporting the South Korean intellectuals in the 1960s. And uh, 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 this is also new evidence, uh, Soviet support for North Korea in the mid 1960s. So my uh, question was, my inquiry was why uh, uh, North Korea uh, attacked uh, South Korea and uh, uh, US forces uh, near the DMZ uh, all of a sudden in the late 1960s. So uh, we can get the answer from these uh, uh, diplomatic uh, uh, secret uh, uh, archives. Uh, so uh, the, uh, it, during the 1960s, it was possible for Kim to concentrate more on the rebuilding of North Korean military capability. So one cannot overlook the fact that the recovery, recovery efforts of the North Korean economy were also successful compared to South Korea uh, during this time. And uh, however, North Korea's anxiety of the gradual political consolidation, diplomatic achievements, and the economic stabilization of the Park jong regime in the mid 1960s induced Kim Il-sung to obtain more aid from USSR and adopt more aggressive tactics vis-a-vis -vis the RK, Republic of Korea. And uh, uh, from 1967 on, Kim Il-sung started to test the South Korean and the US military security systems, either by launching attacks on ships and planes or by sending armed agents and saboteurs, including also guerrillas 
in large numbers. During this time, the U.S. intelligence boat Pueblo was attacked and also uh, captured by North Korean forces and so on. And then the airplane, reconnaissance airplane was also shut down, as I explained. So this was all, uh, 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 Kim Il-sung became uh, very um, uh, uh, ambitious, right? And then uh, he, all of a sudden, he became more aggressive uh, uh, due to the Soviet Union the support. So uh, 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 the uh, the aggressive sudden change of Kim Il Sung's tactics toward the South Korea could be better understood when we carefully look at the East German assessment of the summit meeting between Kim Il Sung and the Soviet Union's leader Leonard. Brezhnev in December 1966. So this was also a secret visit, secret visit. So uh, in the documents, uh, we found out that the Soviet Union uh, promised to deliver a huge amount of uh, economic aid plus uh, military, uh, uh, military uh, you know, support and aid. So I'll skip, and then at that time, there was also a cultural revolution in China. And then uh, because uh, Kim Il-sung did not agree with uh, uh, this line of a cultural revolution in uh, People's Republic of China, uh, the situation between China and uh, North Korea uh, got uh, uh, worsened. Okay, so uh, uh, especially during this time, Kim Il-sung started moving closer to Soviet Union. Dr. Song, that's officially your time for questions. Okay. You want okay. to share more, it's okay, but yeah. So uh, I think uh, uh, the important things I, I, uh, I already uh, mentioned uh, uh, important, things, important things already. Yes, so uh, uh, this involves also the diplomacy between the uh, Soviet Union and China. So who, uh, you know, we want to have a North Korea on our side, that kind of uh, strategy. So this was also involved. I think I should stop here. Well, thank you very much for your presentation. Um, and actually, this was all quite new to me. This is uh, outside of my scope of research. It was really interesting to learn about. Um, now, Professor uh, Dr. Lee and Dr. Gao have both had to leave the session. So you're the, uh, you have the benefit of any of the question time and discussion time now. Uh, so let's see, does anyone have any comments or questions? And you can place them in the um, in the chat box also if you like. Maybe also in Korean if you want to have <laughs> questions in Korean. You could write them in Korean. Professor Song can easily read them. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is an uh, entirely new field. Uh, uh, Apart from my uh, <laughs> my uh, linguistics uh, work, right? Linguistics it's really different. Yeah. Yes, entirely different. Yes, it, it, but then it's a highly multinational. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the uh, historical multinational, context. Yes, yeah. the multinational uh, research project with a, a lot of uh, historical Cold War uh, mm -hmm. issues and uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Are documents being released more and more these days? Like uh, yes, yes, yeah, more and more. And yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. If let's say uh, if the if the document was uh, uh, established or recorded in nineteen ninety, nineteen ninety, so then uh, thirty years after. Wow. So. so you Access. 2000, yes, 2022, right? Mm -hmm. I, oh, no, no, actually 2020, right? 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, in 2020, uh, you you can have access to those documents. So, uh, so so you have to visit the visit the sites regularly. <laughs> mm -hmm. And and I think you know in the years to come we'll learn more and more, right? We'll be able That's to right. continue to uncover. So. That's right. Yes. It's an, yeah. it's an exciting new area to get into also because you can keep discovering things so that's really yeah. Cool. yeah yes yes and then uh because those these documents are in german so uh not that many people uh, can have access yeah. So, yeah yeah so it's important work for you to do yeah yes many people are many people are doing research in this area mm -hmm. they are uh, mostly dependent on the the u.s uh, uh, state of department archives or uh, uh, U.S. Uh, Department of uh, Defense archives, yeah. and also uh, on the Korean archives. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but then you know these uh, former uh, socialist uh, uh, bloc uh, nations, uh, mm -hmm. uh, diplomatic or political archives, they are precious uh, uh, resources. Yeah. Or precious precious sources for uh, doing uh, Cold War research. Mm -hmm. And to be able to triangulate some of the other data that's coming out of the other sources too, I'm sure. Yeah, that's right, yes, yes. All yes. right, well, thank you so very much for your talk. Sure, thank you. I think we're supposed to have a 15-minute intermission now, is that correct?